to smooth the skin using retouching academy just come to your photoshop and click on the retouching academy right here if you don't already have this retouching academy send me a dm on instagram after you install it just come to your windows and click on extension and I click on beauty retouch and it's going to open like this after that click on focus separation via gaussian blur if you use media click on focus separation via media but i use gaussian blur i'm going to click on via gaussian blur like this and the reason why I use focus separation is because we want to separate the textures from the colors and we want to put them in two different layers so we're going to have the texture layer and the textures contain all the blemishes on the image while the low frequency contains all the colors on the image like that so we want to put them in two different layers all right so that's why you separate them with focus separation now for the gaussian blur radius i'm just going to tell you this if you want your image to be smooth like you want to get a smooth image use a low focus separation blur radius but if you want to retain textures on your image use a high focus separation blur radius now the trick here is to find that sweet spot that works for you and know how to get the right focus separation blur radius for me here's what i do for image like this i can use four or five for image like this but for this particular image i'll be using five for this particular image or four I'll use 4 for this particular image and click on OK. Why for headshots like this, I'm going to be using focus separation blur radius of about 8 to 25 for this kind of image right here on the screen. Depending on how details or how sharp images, but for headshot like this or beauty image, I use focus separation blur radius of 8 to 25. Why for full body image like this, I use focus separation blur radius of about 2 to 3 or 2 to 3.5 for images like this. Why for portrait like this, I use 6.4, I use 6, I use 5. So 5 to 6.4 for image like this. So that's what I use and it has been working for me. So you can just play with the radius and see which one works for you and see your sweet spot and start using it. So basically this is how I actually get my own focus separation Gaussian blur radius. So for this headshot image, I'm going to click on focus separation via Gaussian blur. And for this image, I'm just going to use 9 and click on OK. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to run under focus separation again. And just a quick tip, you can do as many focus separation as possible. There is no rule that says you only have to do one focus separation to retouch one image. So you can do as many focus separation as possible. So if I use knife for this image and I feel I don't like the way it's looking or I don't like how smooth it is, I'll just run under focus separation on top of that and make it even more smooth. So you can see right here, we have our low focus C. We have our corrective tones and we have our high frequency. So this low frequency consists of the colors where all the color is on the image. All right. Now, why this high frequency consists of all the textures on the image? Why this correcting tool right here is where we are going to be brushing on. I'm going to come back to that in a bit. So back to high frequency texture. Since we want to smoothen out the skin. Now to smoothen out the skin of your image, you have to remove all the blemishes, all the imperfections before the skin is going to be smooth. So the first thing you are going to do, come to your high frequency texture layer right here, which is this first one right here. So just zoom in a little bit. Pick your close stamp tool. With your close stamp tool selected, make sure your mode is on normal. Make sure you're using a soft one brush. Make sure your opacity is set to 100. Flow set to 100. Align is checked and current layer is selected. Not sample or layer make sure current layer is selected now after that to use your close time to remove your blemishes just use your square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size according to the blemishes you want to remove now i want to remove these blemishes right here i'm just going to increase my brush size like this press alternate on my keyboard once i press and hold alternate i'm going to sample from a close by area to fix that blemishes right there so once i sample once i hold i'm just going to click and sample like this take my hands off alternate and just paint on the blemishes to remove it just like that sample and remove it just like that so this close time tool is like you are copying a texture from a particular place and pasting it on top of that blemishes to fix it like that so alternate to sample and fix alternate to sample and fix alternate to sample and fix like that so i'm just going to do this repeatedly for the whole of the blemishes on this image just to make it look good and another quick tip if you want to remove those blemishes that look like textures all you have to do is come to your opacity of your close time tool and just take it to 50 percent 
like this and sample from a close by area and just remove those blemishes that look like textures right there this way you don't have to remove them 100 percent you're just going to remove them 50 percent thereby leaving a bit of texture in that particular place instead of just making that place look smooth all right so i'm going to take it back to 100 percent and just remove the blemishes for this image okay we've successfully removed the blemishes for this image so this is the before and this is the after the before and the after now it's time to use the mixer brush to smoothen out the skin all right now you can brush directly on the low frequency or you can brush directly on this creative tone right here with your mixer brush too the difference is that if you brush directly on the low frequency if you make any mistake you will have to delete the whole frequency separation and start all over again from the beginning whereas if you brush on the creative tone right here if you make any mistake you can actually erase that mistake Instead of deleting it and starting one from scratch, you can just erase that particular mistake and start again from that particular place. Okay? Now, with my Musa brush tool selected, you can use any settings that has been working for you. But for me, I make sure I'm using a soft one brush. I make sure this clean brush after each stroke right here is selected. My weight is on 30. My load is on 20. My flow is on 30. And this place right here is set to 10. And sample all layer is selected. And the reason why sample all layer is selected is because I'm working on an empty layer. If I was working directly on the low frequency colors and tones, I'll make sure this sample all layer is unchecked. But since I want to brush on this empty layer right here, sample all layer is selected. So I'm just going to hide my high texture layer right here, and I'm going to get only the colors on this image. Now to mix the color first, don't brush the highlights into the shadows, and don't brush the shadows into the highlights. Just brush them separately, the shadows, the highlights, and the mid-tones, brush each separately. And also, use a square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size according to the portion or according to the parts of the image you are actually working on. So what I mean is that, if I want to work on the highlights on the nose right here, I'm just going to reduce my brush size to fit that particular highlight right there. While if I want to work on this bigger portion, on this shadow area i'm going to increase my brush size to work on that portion of the shadow area and also you don't have to rush this step just take your time take it to one step at a time you don't have to rush it so just take your time to do it and with practice you are going to get used to it so i'm just going to smoothen out this image right now so i'm going to paint on this particular place like this okay and also this highlight on the cheek, I'm going to paint on it separately. You can see I reduce my brush size to paint on that place separately. And for the transition, I'm just going to brush on the transition like this. Okay. And do the same thing right here. Like this. So whatever you do, make sure you are brushing your highlights separately, your shadow separately, and your mid-tones separately, okay? So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. Alright, let's see the before and after. So, this is the before, and this is the after. So I feel it's not looking smooth the way I actually want it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run another focus separation again so like i said there is no law that said you have to use one focus separation to actually retouch your image so i'm just going to run another focus separation again via gaussian blur and this time i'm going to use a blur reduce of about eight and click on ok now i'm going to hide my high texture layer again pick my mixer brush tool and just smoothen out this image again like that until i feel it smooths the way i want it and because I use it, it doesn't mean you should use it. You can go down if you want. Like I said, use what works for you. Like I said earlier, if you want your image to be smooth, use a lower focus separation gaussian blur radius. And also, if you want to retain texture on your image, use a higher focus separation via gaussian blur radius. I think it's looking smooth like this. So let's quickly see the before and after. All right, it's looking smooth like this. I like it like this. So. This is the before and this is the after. Let me just group everything I did so I can show you the before and after. So, this is where we started from and this is where we are right now. Where we started from and where we are right there. 
if you want to smoothen out even more, use a low African Revolution Gaussian blur radius. And if you want to watch how I retouch this image from start to finish, click on this video show right here. I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay creative.